Well, I have everything cleaned up. Cleaned up pretty good. I couldn't get some of that red paint off. And I even cleaned up the electrical components with water and, de and degreaser. So I did let it set. It is the next day. And my goal today is to just see if I can't get this back together. So let's get right into that. I really don't have a rhyme to reason and how I'm going to put it back together. It's just, I'm just going to start and do it. Um, we'll put the, I guess we'll start with the motor. There's no real reason why. Whoops, that's backwards. I know these wires came out this slot right here, so let's put this right in there if we can. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Nope. I believe it's got to slide in there just right. There we go. The only bolts that could fit in there, let's see if they're lined up. I think they are. Nope, not quite. Which way do we need to go? Maybe there. Might have to put something down in there to align it. Is that one going? Yeah, that one looks like it's tightening up. And that is also. So let me tighten those. What the world? Something's not right. And pull those back out and see what's going on here. Ah, I see the problem. I got the wrong bolts. Those are too small. I didn't see these over here, so let's get these out. Yeah, that's why it's always a good idea to keep the bolts where they belong. I get in a hurry sometimes and I don't, but let's get this out of here. I didn't see these sitting over here, but they're just a, a little bit bigger. And yes, they're fitting a lot tighter. Oh yeah, that's snugged right up. Let's see if this one does. Probably should have started them both before I snugged that one up, but it's going in just fine. Oh, that's going to be torqued just right. Okay, the next step is to reattach. Get you in there. You can see that right there. I got to put these spring things over. Yeah, there we go. Push that down, and then we have inside here the same thing. They make it easy to hook the wires in for your brushes, that's for sure. That's really nice design. Okay, the next step is this bearing here, and I'm going to put some WD-40, just a little bit of it on there, and I did get that bearing wet, and it might have got seeped in some, but I want you to take notice about this. I took some memory cloth, and I cleaned this, and I cleaned this off here where the uh, brush is right against. And I just got a little bit of that WD-40 on it. I'm gonna clean that off really good. 
because the idea is these brushes get put into the side here and they come against that and you can see that there's better than half of that brush left which means this all even though it was abused and used unless the brushes were changed wasn't used that much but let's get this back together now the the thing with this is how did it go um, I think like this right here maybe yep that's fitting right down in there kinda but that isn't going in there she went in it just needed some persuasion now unless I'm all wet these two go in here the ones I tried to use otherwise you can see let's let's just see here this one right here goes right there yeah there's a lot of little parts laying here hope I remember how it all goes together I'm not gonna snug that up until I get this snugged up for some reason I'll get this mallet by the way on this mallet this rubber was really hard and I refurbished it or I restored it in a way that I softened that rubber up and there's going to be a video come out me showing you how to do that. Well, I got to loosen something up because something is not fitting quite right. That should slip right together. So let's loosen this back up and see where we went wrong. Something's happening. You know, the worst thing that could happen is the thing wouldn't run anymore. And I guess what I say to that is, so what? wonder if this is the right one for here. Let's take an inventory on what we got. Those three are the same. Those four are the same. So it's the only one it could be, really. And it matches the head of the other two. Let's see if I can bring that tight. Oh, yeah. That, that came right up together. Let's just re -snug. Oh. You have to know, I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to this stuff, but I just do it. Now, I'm not going to put those brushes in right away in case I find that I've got something not put together right. That spins nicely. There is a little bit of play in that, though. That bearing right in there was showing a little bit of signs of wear. I just said I wasn't going to put the brushes in, but you know what? I just changed my mind. I'm going to put them in. They go in real easy. can only go in one way. You look at that curvature on there. And even if they're in a different than what they were before, it's still going to work. Okay, let's screw that in. The design of this is that these go in snug and a spring on the end of the uh, brush puts enough tension on the brush to keep it where it's supposed to go. Uh, the tension on the, uh, I guess that's an armature, I don't know what that's called, that copper thing that I said I sanded down. Um, I could have done one more thing, that thing has grooves on it. Sometimes I'll take a little pick and clean those grooves out. 
uh, but I didn't. Yeah, they looked like they were pretty clean. Okay, we're not going to do the handle immediately. And so where does that leave us? That leads us to this right here, which I have to determine if it matters how that goes. But I can always get some different screws. Now what I need to do is pre-fill this with grease. So let me go get my grease and now well, let's see, maybe this will work right here. Let's see if I can do it with this. I'm going to pump grease right in here. Now oh, that's... That looks like it's going to work. Now we're going to hold up just for a minute because this gear right there let me bring in just a little tighter so you can see it. This gear right here, I have to get grease worked all the way around it because it was like that before. And I want to make sure that it's nice and greased up really well. So I'm turning the propeller here and pushing grease in and it's pulling it right in. Nice. By the way, this is a marine grease I'm using. It's not what came out, but it's what I have on hand, and it's what I'm going to use. Now, I'm going to shove this in there so that it can start to get filled with grease. And it'll push some of that out of there. Yeah, just like that. Now I'm going to take it back out and just see how, wow, that's got a lot of suction on it. Maybe I won't take that back out. Maybe I shouldn't take it back out. Let's see what we got here. Well, I can't believe how much suction that has on it. Look at that. That done wonderful. I don't know that I would want it any better than that. So let's turn that just a little bit so we can get that shaft. And see this hole right here? I can pump more grease right in there or put it in a cap. And that cap actually uh, pushes the grease down into the nooks and crannies. I was telling you the other day how I pull a lot of junk out of the trash and just to see if I can't bring life back to it. It's been something I've done my entire life um, in the construction industry. We started a new business years ago. It's called Limberloss Construction here in Geneva, Indiana. And along with our father, my two other two brothers, we started this business. Now my one brother owns it, but in the day when we started, we followed kind of a family tradition and we did a lot of historic restoration throughout Indiana, Ohio, Lower Michigan. My dad came from a large family. I think they had 21 siblings, at least some of them I don't, uh, there were some that didn't uh, survive, and it, uh, and then a couple of them were adopted. But what I'm trying to say is,
We have a long tradition of historic restoration in, in my dad's family and even in my mother's family. It goes back a lot of years. Them being um, his uh, old order Amish in that tradition that kind of followed along with them. They uh, left the Amish community when they were first married. And, well, picked up the restoration business. Uh, some, and my brothers and I and my dad followed suit. And now we don't do much of it anymore. But boy, in the day, we... We uh, restored grist mills. If you need to set up a flat runner stone, French burr was my desired stone. I know how to do that. Flat belts, pulleys, water wheels, turbines, water turbines, sharpening them, build all the wooden components set the shafts up, calculated the RPMs, we built the flumes to, to bring the water to the water wheel. We went into places where they used to have this stuff and we went at it and we, we put that kind of stuff all back together. It was part of our family history. And I'm so afraid that the generation doing that kind of work, at least in our family, is coming to an end. I don't have any sons that picked it up, and my brother Mike don't have any sons that picked it up. So I guess with our generation, that could be the end of it for us. And in a way, I find that uh, sad, sad, but in another way, I encourage my boys to do what they wanted to do and not what dad wanted them to do, that being me. I have one boy that uh, is a really great auto mechanic in, in this area. I don't know that there's any finer. There may be. I don't know who that would be. Uh, it's just... And then I have another son that uh, has, um, flies for American Airline all over the place. And I have uh, a couple other, I got one more son and he's, uh, he works in Indianapolis for Eli Lilly. So they chose their own paths and I encouraged them to do so. When I was their age and choosing a career, I was kind of forced into it simply because that's just what we did. Myself, I started construction when I was 13. Went my first full day on the job. Of course, my dad had his own business back then. So I wasn't working for somebody else, but I got treated just like any other worker. 
some of it good, some of it bad. But we did what we did. And we did a lot of work out, out, of, out of town, which, uh, you know, for a 13, 14 year old kid in the summertime, to leave home like that and go out on a job with all the other workers and everything that went with some of the harsh environment and construction. It was, well, at the very least, educating. Uh, but it helped develop me to what I am today, be it good or be it bad. Well, that isn't right. Ah, I see what I did wrong. I'm sitting here talking and not really paying attention. Sorry about that, but but I don't know if you're interested in hearing that that kind of story or not. But here I am, all these years later, fixing an old junk saw and my brother Mike like I said he still has the construction company I got out years ago well not years ago I guess it's years ago now it was 2023 something still isn't correct here just give me a minute to figure this out to choose a different path for myself before I got too old. Ah, I see the problem. I need to go right there and right there. I had to put it in the wrong position. And I did that. I chose, I felt like I was called into ministry, so I, I went to college, got a degree in ministry, and was that for 15 years, and then you know, uh, along with that, in part, I managed the hardware, and in the last several years, that's all I did, is manage a 142-year-old hardware. And that was very interesting. Turned it into what's known as Do It Best. It's an Indiana company worldwide distributor of hardware products and that's what we are today I still work part-time in there although I'm trying really hard to retire about a year ago I started really pursuing YouTube videos and uh, picking up where I was back when I was a kid fixing old junk and sharing it with others, at least those who are interesting, interested in the old junk that I fix. And, oh, let's see if I got this right or wrong. I think I have it wrong. Yeah, I do. Let's take this off. Wasn't sure, but we'll get her here. It's, it's not rocket science or like my son does down there at Indianapolis. Um, medical science, that's something. I often wonder where he got his desire to do that um, it's not an easy it's not easy to do 
I'll tell you that right now, it's just not easy. We're going to put this on knowing that I may have to take it off again, but I want this to come together so I can get some of these pieces used up before I start putting everything in. <sighs> what do you think? Is that coming together? There we go. There. That, that. Okay, I believe this would be the next item to put on. If I remember right, taking this apart, there was two screws that were correct and one that was wrong. So, this one looks right. And I might have used the one up that was Now this is the only one I got left that I'm pretty certain that'll fit in there. So let's see if it goes. I might have to loosen these two because it needs turned just a little bit. There we go. Now it lines up. Yep, that one's definitely going in. Let's snug it up just to make sure. I didn't even clean the heads of these screws off or bolts, machine bolts, I guess they are. And the reason being is this isn't a restoration. It's just trying to get it to go again. There we are with that. Now this goes right here with this split ring. But before we put that on, we need to figure out, I don't know where that goes. That went somewhere, but for the life of me, I don't remember where. Okay, the spring goes right in there. There's a little hole that that fits into. And then there's a little hole on this. You probably can't see it, but it's there that this slips into. Let me get it started and then we'll see if we can't get it in place and then check it to see if it works. Okay, feels right. Now let's get this split ring down on there. I should be able to put it on without the pliers. Yep, nope, that's not in the right groove. It's in a groove, don't get me wrong, but not the right one. I did get me a ring pliers. Let's see if I can get this opened enough to get it on. There she went. Boy, when you got the right tools, doesn't that make it a lot easier? Well, that needs some. This little bumper goes right here keep that from going too far, but I can tell you right now that this isn't working properly. I still wish I knew where this went. I may be tearing this completely apart again if I can't figure that out, because I have a feeling that that's kind of important. 
but we'll just keep going until we get the thing put back together and we'll see what we have. What I'm putting on here is a little lever. I think that's the correct position. Say 368 is the number of this saw. I believe it's an eight and a quarter inch. I thought it was a seven and a quarter to start with, but discovered that's not bad. But what I need to do is spray some silicone lubricant right in here, the dry lubricant. Okay, here's the nut that goes on it, but there's a piece missing here, and I am going to have to find that. You know what, I think I know what this is for. I think that they use this to kind of rig it up so they can put this blade on because they didn't have the right stuff. It's exactly what they did. That like that, and then they had an old washer over it yet. Pretty certain that's what that's for. So we don't have to worry about that part, hopefully. We'll turn that on, but I'm gonna have to see if I can get an, uh, at least a secondary shoulder, whatever that's called. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that you can't tighten a blade up without it. So you need that to tighten a blade up. We know this comes here like that. And then this will mount right on there like that. But before we do that, we have to get the cord. Here's the cord and here's the wires. See this will feed through here and go inside there. And then once it gets uh, tightened up, it squashes that down right there and this into place. But before we do that, we've got some wiring to work on. Having the old original cord and the new cord actually helps me quite a bit because I can go ahead and mark the new cord in relationship to where these wires actually were. So I don't have to guess at the length because I know those worked. Now the trick is to get this cut through just enough Oh, there we go, that it don't cut all the way through. So there we have the wires. I tested it, I've got power coming into the switch and I've got power going out of the switch. So the problem isn't with the switch. The problem is each internal. So let's turn this over, take this off again, and just take a look and see if I've busted a wire or something. And maybe the dumb thing never worked to start with. I don't see this brush touching. And let me clean that up good. Let's take this brush here back out and see what's going on with it. There, it's touching. I wonder if it wasn't touching. Let's test it again. Hope it was just something that simple. 
I'm not very good when it comes to electrical. Both of those are touching. Get this back up here. Turn that light off. Let's plug it in again. It's a running saw. That's boy, am I glad that worked. I hated the idea of digging into that motor, but uh, that sounded about as good as it could. Going to run it and then put more grease in them gears, but uh, let me finish putting this back together. If I can. I was able to secure a makeshift bolt for this saw. So the real test on a saw to see if it's actually going to work is to rip a piece of wood and that's what I'm going to do. Now this piece of wood I have down here is a piece of yellow pine, just an old scrap piece of wood I have. I'll show you how I rip wood when you don't want to use a fence, it doesn't have to be exact. Back in the day when we would rip wood and let's say if I needed it uh, Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to say right there, I, you put your th uh, finger and thumb right like that, and you hit the trigger, and you just follow along. Let's see if this will cut. That's all cut perfectly. Look at this. Now I'm going to get a tape measure and we're going to measure it and see how accurate I am. Okay, here you are. This measures. Don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but we're going to try. That measures approximately, let's go from this direction. That measures approximately two and five sixteenths. And this measures two and a quarter exactly. So I'm one sixteenth of an inch off. You saw how fast I went through that. Look at that cut. Just look at that cut. I mean, this saw works good. Now let's do another test. Let's, let's say if I want to take three quarters of an inch off of this. Let's see how that works out. Okay, let's measure. I'll tell you what, let's make it an inch. Easier to measure. So I'm, I'm marking an inch out here on the tape. And we're going to see if we can't cut an inch off of this board or somewhere close. In rough framing, if you're within a sixteenth or an eighth, that's plenty close. So right there, that's right at I've got that set. This edge is right on that mark, so let's see where we are. Well, 
Look at that. One inch exact. It might be just a hair under. But you can see how accurate you can get with a saw like that. I took this old saw that was considered junk and brought it back to life. I'd love to hear about the projects you worked on in bringing old things back to life or any questions you might have, concerns, please share them in the comments. If you like my videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. It's very encouraging and very much appreciated. I love all my subscribers. If you like this video and you want to see other videos similar to this, I encourage you to watch this right here. Can it be fixed? Sure it can. Can you fix it? You're darn right you can. Until the next one.